Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Connected Body Podcast. Today, I am so excited and honored to have Morley Robbins of the Root Cause Protocol, the founder and creator. Welcome, Morley. Well, thank you, Laura. Delighted to be here. Uh, I met Morley and his wife, Liz, a few weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago at Love and Healing Energy here in Delray. And I saw that Morley was coming to speak and I immediately signed up to hear him speak and I bought his book right away. So I was blown away by this man, the information he he researches tired tirelessly. So Morley, I think instead of me introducing you any further, why don't you please introduce yourself and give us a little bit of your background? Well, like I said, I'm delighted to be here. Uh, it was really fun to have that um, sound bath that we had several weeks ago. Thank and, you. Uh, <clears throat> I'm glad you were able to participate in the uh, a little seminar that I did. That was fun. Oh, yeah, um, little seminar, an amazing yeah. seminar. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a former hospital guy that um, almost 15 years ago realized there was something wrong and uh, wasn't sure what it was, but uh, been digging for a lot of years, tirelessly, as you say, um, to get to the bottom. And, <clears throat> and I think I've finally scraped the bottom of the barrel, but it uh, as many people who know, who've, who've heard of my work or followed my podcasts, um, the, the meme that runs medicine is that we're anemic and we're copper toxic. And the truth is just the opposite. Uh, yeah. We are drowning in iron because of the food system and the supplements and a whole variety of other factors. And we don't have enough copper to run our body. And as you'll recall, we had party favors at the uh, yes. the meeting in, uh, in Delray. And this is the little party favor. It's, everybody yes. knows what this is. It's the yes. copper top battery. Yes. And it's hard to believe, but that's what runs our body. Yeah. And it's so simple. It's too simple. And some people look for more complicated reasons. Right. But at the end of the day, we just need to get more bioavailable copper in our body and let the um, immune system and, the, and our metabolism take over. Yeah, I, I love that. It's so simple and people always want it to be so complex, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, well, we can make it complex, but, it's, oh, yeah. but it is. Yeah. We can make anything complex. Well, tell us about the supplements because we've kind of been, I feel like I read in your book and I believe too, misled and misfed about taking supplements and multivitamins and mm -hmm. yeah i mean we, we have been overstimulated by the system you know we're eating food that's not really food right uh, <clears throat> there's all sorts of nutrients being added that, that aren't helping us you know the iron fortification uh, right is, is a big joke and all the sugars and the extra calcium and vitamin d and it's very very hard on our system. And what what we've uncovered in the RCP is just there are certain things we've got to stop doing and there are certain things we've got to start doing. And I think what always surprises people, especially in this post-COVID era, is that ascorbic acid and vitamin D and zinc are not our friends. And right. anyone who knows anything about COVID knows I have to take the COVID cocktail to make right. sure I don't get COVID. And right. uh, playing in the background of that whole psychodrama was trying to destroy our copper status. And right. I didn't know that right away, but it only took me a couple months to realize. It was probably about May of 2020. I went, wait a minute. <laughs> so I, I renamed what COVID stands for. And COV stands for coppers vanished and irons dysregulated. Right. But if you don't know about seminal research that was done in March and May of 1928 by two separate research teams here in, in the States, that if you withhold copper from an animal, iron takes off like a rocket in the liver mm -hmm. 
And that's pretty much what, what's been running uh, our metabolism for the last hundred years. And if you don't know that, you're just, you know, very naively going along thinking that everything makes sense when in fact it doesn't make sense. Right, right. And, and so we've got to be very uh, discerning when it comes to our supplements. Right. And we only, we only recommend a handful in the RCP. And we absolutely tell people to stop taking their multis, stop taking right. calcium, stop taking zinc, stop taking vitamin D, stop taking ascorbic acid. And, and in the beginning, people are always a little bit unnerved by that. Sure. But then they, then they come to realize, well, wow, this makes so, so much sense. Yeah. Yeah. Because exactly. I I did it too. C, D, all of them. Zinc. Sure. You're thinking, I'm not going to get sick. I'm going to take all this stuff. But when, yeah. when you, when you lecture and when you read the book, you're like, oh my gosh, like it makes so much sense. And that's another reason to, uh, that you can explain to us why everyone is walking around tired. I know women come to me all the time, Laura, I've done this, I've done that. I'm dragging, I'm tired. What is wrong with me? Yeah, well, they, they're they are doing what they were told to do. That's the sure. problem. And they didn't know that there's a whole nother paradigm of healing. And that's what the book is about. Right. Uh, and there's intention in the title, Cure Your Fatigue. And, you know, the, the little box around the CU is to highlight the symbol for copper. Uh, for those hardy few who remember that from your biology class in high school. And um, th it turns out there's like 32,000 conditions that are listed in the Merck manual. Well, guess how many of them start with cellular energy deficiency? Mm -hmm. All, all 32,000 of them. Right. As soon as the cell can't make enough energy, it, everything starts to uh, unfold and, and unravel right. and the wheels start to come off the train and uh, it, it's magical. It's very simple. And what we've got to do is um, begin to reverse, reverse engineer everything they've been telling us to do. So they've been telling us to go this way and we got to go that way. Yeah. And the faster we do that, the, the more energy we're going to have, the, the more, effective our immune system is going to be and the better we're going to feel right right so i personally have noticed a difference within the past like two weeks that i've been doing the starts and the stops which you know we'll talk about a little bit later but um oxid oxidation and stress stress on the body like we're we're rusting inside can you touch on yeah. that topic yeah well um we, li we live on a planet that has 21% poison in the air. It's called oxygen. And we, we know we can't live without oxygen. Right. But we can't age without oxidative stress. And the number one, the number one element on planet Earth is iron. I mean, it's, it, it's like 36% of the Earth's composition uh, involves iron. It's what's behind gravity. Get it? Right, you know, right. Yeah. <laughs> Objects fall to the to the center of the planet because of the iron ball at the center, at the core. And iron and oxygen don't play well together, do they? No. You no, know, they create no. rust. Yeah. And no. what we were never told is that there's a rusting process inside our body. And it's called plaque. And it's called you know, uh, pro protein accumulation. Uh, there's all sorts of names for it. Right. And the, the whole thing is we've got to just be aware of that, uh, that, that there's only one element, only one element on the planet that can keep iron and oxygen away from each other. And that's copper. It's, it has a magical ability to prevent iron and oxygen from creating rust. And, you know, it, it's why we're here. It's why right. higher right. life forms are on this planet. It's why we're using this fancy system called Zoom, because right. higher intelligence requires, or, or technology like this requires higher intelligence, and higher intelligence 
right. requires more energy. And in order to have more energy, you've got to have more bioavailable copper. Yes. That, and that's yes. it. It's no more complicated than that. So explain to everyone how we got so copper deficient. Like, how much time do we have? <laughs> um, well, there's, there, there was a uh, convergence of the farming system, the food processing system, and the pharmaceutical system. And this goes back about a century. And they started to introduce farming chemicals like NPK, you know, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Mm -hmm. They were actually, uh, in large part, left over from the First World War, believe it or not. They were used in munitions. Wow. And since they were around, you got to use them up, right? Right. And so it turns out that NPK blocks copper uptake uh, in, in root, the root systems of plants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and that includes grass, so that NPK is going to block copper getting into the grass, which is going to affect what happens with the animals eating the grass. Sure. And then they started to refine the food and strip away all the minerals in the food, mm -hmm. the grains. And and suddenly they then in the 1941 they decided to add iron filings to the yes. wheat flour. Yes. It's like, okay. Well, iron and copper don't play well together. Right. Uh, especially when iron has a more dominant stance. And, and then pharmaceuticals started to change. And antibiotics were introduced in the Second World War. Penicillin, you know, it was a, a miracle of sorts, if you will. Right, right. But the first step in breaking down penicillin is to make penicillamine. Well, penicillamine is one of the most powerful copper chelators on the planet. And so the, that, that's how the bacteria in our gut got killed was mm -hmm. because the, the penicillamine will... Do, do you think the penicillin stopped at, at our gut bacteria or the bad bugs? No. Yeah. And and what are, the, what are the mitochondria on the cover of that the book that you've got, what are they called? Yeah. They're called purple bacteria. And if you look closely, it's right there. There's a big enlarged uh, yeah. image of a purple bacteria, also called mitochondria. And so it's just like, it's been right under our nose this whole time. Right. But we just didn't realize uh, what was going on. And for some odd reason, I was inspired to start researching 14 years ago. And those who may recall, I started out with a focus on magnesium, right? which then got me to oxidative stress, which got me to iron, which got me to what's regulating iron and oxygen, well, that's copper. And then to realize that copper isn't just a mineral, it needs to be bioavailable. Right. It needs to be housed, if you will, in critical proteins and enzymes. And we're, we're told that there are only nine for humans, but in plants, there's over 300 copper enzymes. Wow. <laughs> which, which I find very funny. Um, so I have a feeling we have more than nine. I but we'll just so. accept yes. nine. <laughs> yeah, but the, but the nine that we have are really big and really important. And people can see that I've got this... Um, picture behind me that's a it's a triangle right you know, and there's a top to the triangle right right and that's there's a pecking order in the minerals well there's 82 minerals that we can get from seawater mm -hmm. but they are in a hierarchy and copper is at the very top Interesting. because of its because of its importance to regulate iron right and right. when iron is regulated we don't lose as much magnesium. Mm -hmm. And that's really important. And that's so. that's what the book says. How, your fatigue, how balancing three minerals and one protein is the solution that you're looking for. And right. copper is right up there. That's the top. And that protein, no one's ever heard of, is called ceruloplasmin. 
And cerulo is a funny way of saying blue. Mm -hmm. Plasmin is a funny way, way of saying blood. And this is the word that your doctor would have memorized for one question on their boards and then forgotten it because they don't measure it. When in fact, it's the whole focal point of the root cause protocol. We, right. we obsess about what's the status of your um, ceruloplasmin and getting people to reframe their understanding of the problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and you have this beautiful start-stop protocol for the root cause protocol, which I think is really great because people can put it into action right away. It's not like, oh, I have to do all these things. Like once you start reading it, you can put put the things into action and they're all um, really simple to start with, the stops. Well, they, they are simple. It's getting people to believe that we're right. Right. And I had a very engaging conversation a number of years ago with a Amish farmer staying in his home and um, his wife opened up their, their vitamin drawer. <laughs> and I was like, I was shocked at what I saw. Yeah. And he had this huge tall jar of ascorbic acid. Well, ascorbic acid is very hard on ceruloplasma. Mm -hmm. It makes the protein fall apart. And ascorbic acid is not the same thing as whole food vitamin C. Yeah. They're, they're completely different. And so um, Amos was asking me about that and, and he was questioning me. And, and he said, well, why should I believe you? I said, that's a great question. Yeah. I said, just because you don't know what I know doesn't mean I'm wrong. And he went, wow, I've never thought of it that way. So he was really struck by the fact that maybe I did know things that he didn't know. Right. That maybe he wasn't privy to in his readings and, and his conversations. So it just became a, an important reference point for people to realize there's a, a lot of information out there that we don't know about. Yeah. It's out of sight, out of mind. But, but one of our friends is a pastor in a small church in Maryland, and he has a great saying that he uses with his parishioners what and they debate the, the bible the understanding of the bible missing information equals missing truth yeah if you don't know about those nine copper enzymes if you don't know that there's a hierarchy if you don't know that copper regulates iron and oxygen at the same time well then you don't understand the truth of human metabolism and that's yeah. really what the rcp is, is built upon it's those yeah. kinds of hidden truths yeah so tr so true there's so much information that we don't know until we know <laughs> um can you tell everyone how many hours a day you research and read and you just like didn't come up with this. You are a very, very knowledgeable man. Well, I spent about two or three hours a day, but then I, I'm thinking about it all day long. Right. And then, you know, I do consults and I have the opportunity to have podcasts like this. And it's it's so comforting to be able to talk to you and, and to your colleagues out there because it gets all bottled up inside me. And I'm like, I'm about to explode <laughs> with what I know. <laughs> and, uh, people are very gracious to uh, give me the airtime. But it's um, it's really been a 14-year journey, uh, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. I didn't take the weekends off. I just somehow it became um, part of my daily routine. And, um, and I'm absolutely guided. I mean, there's no way, there's no way to explain how I found articles and um, I never know where I'm going to go from one day to the next, but there's a sort of a theme that I'm I'm working in. Like right now, the theme is a particular copper enzyme. It's called PAM, P-A-M. Uh -huh. I don't even think I mentioned it. In no. Florida. No. And it's a the name PAM is about this long. It stands for peptidoglycine alpha amidating monooxygenase. It's like, wow, that's a handle, right? <laughs> right. And um, 
And it's a really, really, really important enzyme that nobody knows anything about. Mm -hmm. And I've asked a handful of doctors, tell me what you know about the PAM enzyme. And they go, the who? The what? And it is a blockbuster. And I, um, I've known about it for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. But I haven't known its full reach until the mm -hmm. last couple of weeks. Wow. It's actually, actually just since we came back from our time in Del Rey, which was absolutely spectacular, mm -hmm. we will be coming back. Uh, you have to go probably, listen to Morley. He comes. Yeah, probably, probably in the middle of summer. Believe okay. it or not. That, that's how badly we want to come back and okay. uh, is endure the, the heat. But um, <laughs> since we came back, uh, it just seems like it dropped into my lap. Mm -hmm. And there's an oh my gosh factor to it. So it's, it'll, mm -hmm. be, it'll be a whole new um, frame of reference when I chat with people when we, when we do return. Okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about thyroid because that's a huge, huge topic, with, especially with my listeners um, and myself. Just thyroid, you, you feel like you're tired, something's wrong, you go to the doctor, they say, oh, you have you know, Hashimoto's or they want to put you on medication. And that's all they do. They don't, I, I just, I was like, thank you, but no, thank you. I'll figure it out myself. I just didn't feel like there was something missing. There was something missing. Well, <clears throat> I'm one of those quirky guys who refuses to believe that this butterfly in our throat runs the body. Mm -hmm. it, just, it makes no sense to me. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not I'm not a uh, a luddite. I know about the hormones. I know how powerful they can be. But I don't think hormones run the body. I think they mm. respond to the imbalances of the body. And what That's they're trying huge. to do is, is yeah, it's a different response. And what they're trying to do is is balance the minerals. Mm -hmm. It's really what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. And a lot a lot of my thinking was uh, formed by studying work of European endocrinologists because they think very differently right. than American endocriminologists. It's a very different breed of cat. Mm. And in Europe, they know that uh, there's a relationship between the thyroid and copper status. Mm -hmm. Between the thyroid and retinol status. Mm -hmm. and, and it actually... It's interesting that you bring this up because it turns out that um, within thyroid function, you, you certainly have heard of TSH. Yes. Thyroxine yes. stimulating hormone, right? Right. Well, that's the major, but there's a major general above the major. So TSH is an important hormone, but above TSH, is something called TRH, thyroid regulating hormone. And that's a general. Mm -hmm. It's a very important general. And that general must have copper to work right. And if it doesn't have copper, it causes the major to increase its production. But that major also needs to have copper. And so if, if the TSH is rising, I know it's a clinical sign of copper deficiency. Right. And it turns out that um, there's a relationship between copper and the thyroid, as we've noted. But, but T4 correlates with serum copper in our blood, mm -hmm. the level of T4. And the level of T3, the active form, yes. relates to the ceruloplasmin in our blood, that blue protein. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so <clears throat> there's a, a team of, of uh, clinicians in Germany headed up by Jens Mitag, M-I-T-T-A-G. And this is from 2012. So this is ancient history for mm -hmm. some people. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Most people worry if the if the study is more than 12 days old, <laughs> I find the real, the real meat and, and substance is at least three or four 
decades ago. Mm-hmm. But uh, this is from 2012. And what they discovered is that the hormone T3, it's an oxygen sensor. Uh-huh. <laughs> is the oxygen being burned right in the cells mm-hmm. of the body? And, and what that's really referring to is, is the oxygen being activated properly, being turned into water so that the energy molecules can be released? Mm-hmm. That's how we make energy. We've got to turn this pesky oxygen into 2H2O. So one O2 molecule, oxygen is two oxygens together, right. O2, and it needs to be turned into two molecules of H2O. Mm-hmm. And when that happens, when that magic happens, there's three energy molecules that go over to another part of the mitochondria to become ATP. And it's magical and it's happening in a split second. Right. Um, we reproduce right. our body weight in ATP every day. Wow. A lot of ATP. Wow. <clears throat> and you can't do it if you don't have copper. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, and ding, so, ding. Ding, ding, ding. Okay. And so um, we'll have to check the frequency of that ding, ding, ding. But <laughs> uh, but the, uh, the thyroid is responding to copper status. And the reason why the oxygen sensor is so important is that what do hormones do? Well, they all have a location where they work and they all have signaling ability back to another site. Mm -hmm. What turns out where the the, uh, T3, the active hormone hangs out is in the mitochondria and if it senses that the oxygen is not being burned right, it sends a signal back to the liver and says, hey, we need some more of that ceruloplasmin thing because one of, one of the many jobs of ceruloplasmin is to shuttle copper to the mitochondria so they can activate the oxygen more efficiently. Mm-hmm. And it's a really big deal. Uh, and it's a very controversial subject matter, but Earl Frieden and um, Zach Miller, uh, and Earl Frieden in 1985 and, and Zach Miller in 2017, uh, pretty well established the fact that ceruloplasmin, in addition to its enzymatic activities, is a ferry and a shuttle for copper atoms. Mm-hmm. And it can carry up to 10 additional coppers and it's just, you know, if, if you don't know that, then yeah. missing information equals missing yeah. truth. Yeah. And it just it becomes a, a focal point of confusion. And then if you don't know those facts, then you're left in the world of, well, this butterfly runs your body. Right. And we right. need to flog it. We need to medicate it. We need yeah. to radiate it. We need to cut it out or whatever. And it's like, no. Come on, stop, stop that. That that just right. doesn't make any sense. Right. And what's particularly noteworthy, Laura, is that I mentioned this PAM enzyme. Yes. Well, the PAM enzyme has tremendous impact and sway in the endocrine glands. And TRH needs to be activated. TSH needs to be activated. And there are over 70 different neuropeptides that need to be activated. Mm-hmm. Well, many of them are from our our brain all the way down to, down to our gonads. Mm-hmm. And many of the organs in between all rely on this PAM enzyme. Mm-hmm. And, and it turns out that the, um, the PAM enzyme doesn't have just one copper, it has two coppers. <laughs> it's a copper A and a copper B. Oh, if wow. You, if you don't have copper A and copper B, no can do. Wow. And if it doesn't wow. do, if it doesn't do, here, let, me give you, let me give you an example of one hormone that you've heard of that needs to be activated before it works. You've probably have heard of insulin. Yes. Yeah. 
Who hasn't? Well, yes. <laughs> insulin is made in our pancreas, so that the liver is on the right side of the body, mm -hmm. and the pancreas is on the left side of the body. Mm -hmm. And and the pancreas loves to make insulin, but guess what? What? It needs to be activated in order to work. And so we have hundreds of millions of people around the world taking insulin. Yeah. And what I'm coming to realize is it's for one reason only. It's not activated. Pam enzyme mm -hmm. is missing top. Mm -hmm. Not working with. Yeah. And, and if the Pam enzyme doesn't work, then then you can't clear sugars properly. Yeah. And it's called, and the phrase that they use is it's called insulin resistance. Yes. Yes. Well, let's go back to when we were little, little boys and girls. On our birthday, and inevitably, someone gave us a toy that required a battery, and they forgot. Yes. Money, right? Remember that? <laughs> yes, Remember that all the time. Right? Happens all the right. time. And in order to understand it properly, we have to put it in clinical terms. It's called playtime resistance. We can't play with the toy because the battery is missing. So right. therefore, it's resisting our efforts at trying to have playtime. Right. Well, that's the way insulin works. If insulin doesn't have, it's if it's not activated, it is resistant to doing its job. Sure. It's that basic. Sure. It's that straightforward. So. And that's one of seventy. There's there's over seventy other hormones that work just like insulin. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. I mean, when I know what uh, my husband and I were having this conversation yesterday about when you talk to someone and you kind of try to get them to understand the, the concept that your body is electric. It's like, they don't, they don't get that, but if your That's heart right. stops, what do they do? They start it with you, electricity. That's a great analogy. Thank you. That's a wonderful, yeah. analogy. I'm going to steal that. I'll call it the, I'll call it the war effect. <laughs> But no, you're absolutely right. That's a that's a great example. Yeah. Yeah. A so light bulb kind of comes on. They're like, oh, okay. All right. Maybe, maybe you got me. But um, so if we are most of us copper deficient, running around on and and other things, low energy, what should we do? Like, are there foods and also stress? Stress I would is a copper zapper too. I think that's a really good topic. Yeah, it really so is. Um, so, we, so we live on a planet that has stress, right? As long as we're yeah. above the ground, we're going to have stress, right? Right. We don't right. know what the stress will be like on the other side, but let's assume it's lower, mm -hmm. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the um, the stress comes in two flavors, acute stress and chronic stress. Mm -hmm. What acute stress is your... You have a bad meal, you have an argument with your spouse, you, right. you're in a car accident, um, something very episodic takes place, and there's an immediate loss of magnesium. Right. It goes right in the toilet. Absolutely. And the reason why is there's a whole class of enzymes called kinase enzymes, and they all have a little magnesium attached to it. And when the body senses stress, it releases the, the phosphate. And in, in that process, magnesium drops into the um, uh, waste matter. Mm -hmm. So that's acute stress. Chronic stress, completely different. Right. Chronic stress is what we've been living for the last three years. Right. We're all still walking on eggshells. Yeah. You know, we, we're not we're, we're not wearing masks anymore. We're not, you know, we're not fearing our neighbors the way we did. But we know that another shoe is going to drop. Right. We absolutely know that. And when we have chronic stress, it affects another brain region and it's called the amygdala. Some of your listeners may have heard of it. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a part of our reptilian brain. And when it senses that there's something threatening out there, it's like a heightened yeah. alert. Yeah. And what does it do? It activates the release of adrenaline and cortisol. Right. Real important hormones, right? Yes. And it's what we're doing is we're responding to fight or flight. Yes. Either we're going to fight the bear or we're going to run away from the bear. Or there's a third option, which is freeze. 
Right. You know, we're so terrified. <laughs> we can't yeah. move. And so um, the, those hormones, though, adrenaline and cortisol, are very hard on copper. So adrenaline is, think of it as a fuel injection system. It's forcing oxygen into the cell. Mm -hmm. And and what's what's holding the oxygen is something called iron. So iron rises with repeated adrenaline. Right. Because it's delivering oxygen <clears throat> and it's got to go someplace. So um, that causes iron to build up. And then cortisol in the, in the face of chronic stress causes an increase in a protein called metallothionine. Well, metallothionine, it's an ancient protein that likes to hold metals. And, and there's a four to five fold increase of metallothionine with chronic release of cortisol. Mm. And metallothionine holds on to copper a thousand times stronger than it holds on to zinc. Wow. And so suddenly we've we've shut down the, the bioavailable copper that's needed to run our immune system, our metabolism, our key uh, neuropeptide system. And so we're at a real disadvantage. Yeah. And who's talking about this? You and me. That's yeah. about it. The yeah. RCP community knows about yeah. it. We teach it in classes. And yeah. and it's not taught in either allopathic or alternative uh, healing circles right. because it kills the business model. Right. And there's, there's no money to be made right. in giving people copper. Uh, yeah. And so the, the chronic stress that we're living has an effect on our minerals. It's going to affect magnesium and copper. Sure. And then by coincidence, I know this is hard to believe, guess what are the two minerals that you need in order to make energy? What? Magnesium and copper. And so if magnesium and copper are on the short list, right. we do have fatigue. Yeah. And yeah. and we will have chronic fatigue. Yeah. And the doctors, God love them, they're wonderful people. And they have a degree after their name, MD. Mm -hmm. Most people don't know that it stands for mineral denialist. Mm. They never were taught about this. And that that's unfortunate. Yeah. You can't blame them for that. They, you can blame their handlers, but right. the doctors per se are really great people trying yes. to yes. solve problems within the construct of their education, right. which was incomplete, right. absolutely woefully incomplete. Right. I agree. Totally agree. So we're running around, not getting the minerals from our food, most people are running around stressed and in that fight or flight state. So it's no wonder why we're all walking around <laughs> tired and dragging. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So I think, you know, again, I would love for everyone listening to read this book that Morley wrote. I'll put it right here and I'll put the links, you know, below. And if you can um, get to, where Morley is speaking, that would be great. But he has a website, the rootcauseprotocol.com. And I know people can download the RPC root cause protocol, which I have here. This is the, the booklet and just educate themselves. Really, you're about people educating themselves so they can make an informed decision for themselves. Yeah, I mean, the, the website, easy website, RCP. 123.org. Very easy to find. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's actually a 50 page document. You know, mm -hmm. So there may be some need to pare that down a little bit. But, uh, <laughs> but we wanted to make sure that people had a complete set of information and that they knew how to go into this process. And there's a series of phases. First thing we tell people is stop doing this. Stop stop these right. 10 to 12 different uh, supplements that people have been engaged in, especially the vitamin D. If, right. you know, I could spend two hours telling you why you don't need vitamin D, especially yeah. if you live in Florida, for heaven's sake. It's just, it just makes open no the door to, and get some vitamin and D. And, and go out for a morning stroll. Mm -hmm. and go out for, and you could, you're going to get all the vitamin D you need 
And, it, and where do we make vitamin D? It's our eyes that get stimulated. We don't have to right. be stark. We don't have to be stark naked at the equator for for seven hours. I mean, that's right. just that's craziness. And right. so, the, the people that I find most challenged by this is people in the southern part of the country, in Florida, you know, Alabama, Texas, Louisiana, over to Arizona, California. Right. And they're like taking copious amounts of vitamin D. I'm like, you've got 300 days of sunshine a year. What are you talking about? Right. So it's just getting people to wake up to the reality of, of how their body really works. Yeah, I think that's important because people are afraid to go out in the sunshine, you know, for fear of getting skin cancer or if they have fair fair skin. But like you said, it comes in through the eyes. So just going outside, taking off your sunglasses. Absolutely. We walk around with sunglasses and, you know, here in Florida, the windows in the cars are like black so the sun doesn't come in obviously you, you want to go outside but how about just touch on and this really gets gets me is our children and our children they 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 don't put their feet on the earth they wake up in the morning they're walking around the house they put their sneakers on they go to school their feet are barely ever touching the earth and that's another way to recharge our battery that's a very good point Laura. that's very very true um and it's just simple benefits of being in touch with Gaia Earth. I mean, yeah. it's, it's very, very powerful. And we we don't think about these practical steps like simple sunshine, simple walking to 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 ground ourselves. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's, our ancestors knew all this. Yeah. And somewhere, I'm I'm fascinated by where did where did that chain of of wisdom that had been passed down for generations. Where did it stop? And it seems like it's been in the last 60 to 75 years. Just it's like with our grandparents, um, it's like something happened. Yeah. And we, we left the realm of natural wisdom and we entered the world of synthetic medicine. Yeah. And it's like we're we're struggling because of it. Yeah, I think that's that's beautiful. I think people are coming back. They're they're waking up, oh, they're becoming yeah. more aware that something's not right here. Like you said, right. going back um, and Dr. Liz and the innate healer, like, you know, inside of you that something is not right That's exactly and that there's right. more, there's more. Yeah, yeah we do. And it's, it's interesting when I'm talking to people, um, especially you know, if I'm doing a client consult, people just, they just, you know, they lock in on what I'm saying. And it's like, it's this, I think people know when they're, when they're hearing truth. Right. And it's just they it's almost like they calm down and they they really listen. And so I hope people get the benefit of that in this conversation because it's it's so distracting right now. There's yeah. so much um, garbage information out there. There's so much distracting news that has nothing to do with reality. Yeah. And we just have to get back to the basics. Yeah. And that takes a, a strong personality to kind of filter out all of this static mm -hmm. and really hone in on a, on a clear message. I love that. I love that. So true. Okay. So kind of touched on a, a lot. I'd love to ch share with everyone like the website again. I know that you have RCP practitioners if someone wants to work with a practitioner and some guidance. Yeah. Can you talk about that and the RCP Institute? Yeah. So um, again, the, the main website is rcp123.org. Uh, there's there's two um, social media sites. There's a Facebook group called right. the Magnesium Advocacy Group. That's where I cut my teeth was on magnesium. So that, <clears throat> that's got a, you know, 250,000 followers now. Right. Uh, it's really it continues to grow about a thousand people a month. Wow. And uh, there's a second group. It's called the RCP page. So we've got a group and a page mm -hmm. and always chatting about what's going on with the, the root cause protocol. Right. And you can just Google my name. And there are a couple hundred podcasts out there. So yeah, plenty of some really plenty great podcasts. blah, blah, blah on my part. And um, a number of years ago, back, it was actually 2017. So it's almost six years ago now. Actually, it is six years ago. Uh, six years ago, 
I started uh, teaching. Uh, and we're now uh, doing our 17th class. Uh, wow. A couple hundred people taking the class but to learn how uh, to apply these principles. This is really designed for uh, practitioners, people like Laura and myself who don't have a professional background, don't have a, a license to defend, but we just want to help right. people. Right. And, and moms. Right. And a lot of a lot of moms have gone through that course so they can take care of their family. Yeah. And it's 16 weeks long. Uh, it's called the RCP Institute. And just a very well-designed, uh, thoughtful um, game plan of teaching people the, the basics about, you know, what's going on with the minerals, especially copper and iron. Yeah. And you know, what what happens to uh, the energy production, and you know, it's just a very straightforward class to teach people how to fully execute this game plan. I love it. I love it. Okay, and I am actually going to get my my blood drawn tomorrow. Oh boy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, like what we'll see. have to do is that we're going to have to do a follow up. Yeah. And we're we're just going to run right through your your blood work and teach people what the significance of these markers are. Yeah. So that they understand that this isn't scary stuff. It's really simple. It's actually kind right. of fun. Right. And and, it's, and the, again, the meme is that we're all anemic. No, yeah. we're not anemic. There's, there's actually three containers for iron. The largest container is, it's a bucket. It's a bucket of iron called hemoglobin. Mm -hmm. And that's in our red blood cells. So it's, it's like 70% of our iron is in that form, in hemoglobin. Right. Well, then there's a teacup, little teacup called ferritin. It's supposed to be, uh, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I get the pinky out. But the, but the uh, ferritin is supposed to be inside the cell not in the blood because right. the blood is outside of the cell. So when it, when ferritin starts to show up in the blood, it's important, but that's, that's less than 10%. So you got this enormous bolus, 70%, less than 10%. And then there's a thimble of iron called serum iron. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's called total iron. Mm -hmm. And it's one-tenth of 1% 1 of the iron in the body. It's a very tiny part. Yeah. But it's incredibly revealing. It helps us understand the iron recycling program that's happening 24-7, mm -hmm. every second of every day. Every second, we have to turn mm -hmm. over two and a half million red blood cells. So we've been, talking, we've been talking now for 50 minutes times 60. So what's that? 3,000. Wow. I'll let you do the math. Times two and a half million. And... In, a, in the course of 24 hours, we have to replace 2 trillion red blood cells. Wow. Big numbers, right? Yeah. Now, here's yeah. the catch. <clears throat> in order, the amount of iron needed to replace 2 trillion red blood cells is 25 milligrams. <laughs> and most people have over 5,000 milligrams in their body. Wow. So 25 is just a little tiny bit. It's, yeah. a, little, it's a wee, wee little bit. Yeah, and yeah. one twentieth. So what is that? Four, four, four percent. Some wow. or four tenths of one percent. Whatever it is, it's a very small amount. Mm -hmm. And so here's the part that will blow your mind. So we need twenty five milligrams every twenty four hours. Mm -hmm. Twenty four of the twenty five milligrams comes from this recycling system. <laughs> twenty four. <laughs> Of the 25, yeah. so 95% of the iron we need gets recycled, right? Constantly recycled. And what we've been led to believe uh, is that we need 25 milligrams every day. Yeah. Well, we do, technically we do, but 24 of it comes from a recycling program. Right. It's internal to our body, and we do not need 25 dietary milligrams of iron every day. Yeah. And that's, that's so where we've gotten into a, a real challenge with our physiology. Right. And everything's iron fortified on top so of we're it. Drowning. We're drowning in it. Yeah. yeah. But, it, but it's not showing up on the blood test mm -hmm. because if you don't have copper, the, the recycling system mm -hmm. is really run by a group of cells called recycling macrophages. Mm -hmm. That's their name. 
Mm -hmm. What are macrophages? Those are the Pac-Man, the gobble up the, the dying cells. Right. And those macrophages have a back door to let the iron out. But here's the catch. The, it's a copper doorman that opens up the iron back door to let the iron out. And if the copper doorman isn't there, then the macrophages mm, yeah. start to fill up with iron. Mm -hmm. And they don't that iron doesn't show up on a blood test because he's bloated macrophages. Right. It, it doesn't count as the iron that's in wow. the blood because it's stuck in the tissue. Right, 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 right. Wow, crazy. That's, crazy, crazy. That's the grand, that's the grand deception that's throwing everyone off whack. Yeah. Well, ugh. So, so much information for everyone to digest today. So I think this is a beautiful place to stop so people yep. can go and listen to this over and over again and really let everything kind of sink in. And if you need more, of course, read the book, visit the website. And I just want to say thank you so much, Morley, for this interview. I have been looking forward to it since uh, the day I, I met you. I was so excited. <laughs> So thank you. Thrilled to have the opportunity. And, and I think it would be a lot of fun to have a follow-up chat about yeah, blood test. For and sure. I think people will be really excited to learn how simple this can be. Yeah. Um, yes. With the starts and the stops. That's what I would encourage everyone to just go download the protocol. Obviously, I printed it out. You can keep it on your computer and you can see the stop starts, stops and starts that we're talking about. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Uh, I will put the links and everything in the show notes. And again, thank you so much, Morley, for being here today. I really appreciate it. You bet. Thank you so much All for right. the opportunity. Okay. Thank bye you, bye. everyone. Bye-bye.